Hi everyone, my name's Mike Eilbrock. Uh, I'm a transit bus technician from the Champaign-Urbana Mass Transit District in Urbana, Illinois. And today I'm going to show you some picoscope captures that I have on a bus that I worked on. Uh, the problem with the bus is that it had a left rear ABS speed sensor code, okay? And it was an intermittent fault. It would uh, occur every now and then, and uh, we did a history, and apparently it's happened a couple times. So I finally got a chance to take a look at this thing and see what was going on. So I hooked up my scope to the two wires for the left rear speed sensor at the computer, and... Uh, basically drove it around the block on a long screen um, of it's it's about eight minutes see right there so eight minute screen and just drove around the block I didn't have to worry about looking at anything while I was driving which is good because you're not supposed to be doing that while you're driving <laughs> And uh, came back and I looked at what I had. So I measured uh, the peak-to-peak -peak amplitude of uh, the ABS speed sensor. And uh, if you look here at the top, my peak-to-peak, -peak, it's only at, uh, oh, yeah, 17.36 volts. Okay? So uh, that's kind of low. So what I did was I uh, got another capture and I compared this one here to a known good one that I have okay so let's go to file let's open up a different one Okay, and this one here is a known good. This was on a bus where a tone ring had gotten bent, and uh, we replaced the tone ring, and everything has been uh, great. So, if you notice, I'm measuring the peak-to-peak -peak on this one. And we are at... Sorry about the focus. Thirty seven point six volts. Okay. So as you can see, the uh the amplitude is a lot higher. Okay. So obviously uh we've got something going on here. So uh, what I'll do is to help us, you know, see this difference, and this is what I did to help me uh, verify that we had something going on. I just uh, added another scope view, and I'm just going to turn uh, this one channel off for the other view, and then... going to go here to uh, reference uh, waveforms and I'm going to go to this one here that I made a reference for of the one with the problem left rear ABS speed sensor problem okay and as you can see the bottom one here, you can already tell that the amplitude is way, way lower. Okay, so let's drop another cursor right there. Another cursor so we can measure peak to peak. And we are at... eighteen point five four volts okay
So that's a lot lower, and it's 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 blatantly obvious. Okay, that one's way higher than that one. Okay, so we've got an issue here, and we need to investigate. Okay, so after you know seeing that signal and verifying, I uh, tested my wiring, and uh, my uh, wiring passed uh, my load test. And uh, so I knew that all my wires were good, all the way down to uh, the computer and everything. And uh, the uh, sensor also check, checked out okay too, because I uh, did a voltage drop test with the sensor installed. And uh, I used uh, Kirchhoff's Law of Voltage Drop uh, to verify that uh, with a load pro, uh, the load pro leads. Um, so basically what I saw on my meter was um, when I loaded the circuit with power going uh, through the sensor and then back to ground through, through the harness uh, with the computer disconnected, I, uh, I had a drop of like 534 uh, millivolts. And that's the drop I was reading across the resistance in my load pro. So I then uh, used that voltage drop there and calculated from the resistance of what the sensor was and uh, everything added up to that source voltage. So I knew two things. I knew that the wiring to the sensor is good and that the internals of the sensor, the wiring itself, the coil that's in there is also good. So... Um, after that, there's two more variables that you have to keep in consideration here. Uh, first one, you could have, it just could be a, a gap issue, okay? But in order to verify if it's a gap issue, it's a little bit more harder on these buses to verify a gap issue. You have to take off the tires and you have to take off the drum. It's not as easy on a semi-truck, okay? Uh, so, I basically did these tests to make sure that I was going in the right direction before I did all that work taking off those wheels and taking off that brake drum, okay? So I was basically at the point where, okay, now I need to take off the tires, I need to take off the drum, I need to check it out. So I took off uh, tires, drum, and I looked at the gap for the sensor. The gap was fine, okay? So the last one you got, magnet, weak magnet. If, you, if the magnet inside the sensor is weak, you will have low amplitude, okay? So at that point, you know, I have no choice. I have to replace the sensor. So I replaced the sensor, uh, made sure that the tone ring looked good and clean, and it was, and I replaced the sensor, okay? So I'll show you now uh, what the new sensor looked like on the test drive. It just takes a bit here to load. All right, now, look at this baby. Looks a lot better. So let's drop some cursors and let's do a measurement here, okay? All right, let's see what our peak to peak is. Wow, look at that. Peak to peak, positive, negative, over 44 volts, 44.71 volts. That's a heck of a lot better. It's way bigger. Okay, and then if you look here, if you zoom in, here's another nice feature of this scope. Say uh, you wanted to double check and uh, look at the teeth on the wheel, okay? Okay. Um, I did that prior too. I looked at the teeth to make sure there wasn't anything wrong on the pulse wheel, and there wasn't. I couldn't see any obvious dropouts, but there's another cool feature. You can zoom in on this, and you can look at all those teeth on that tone ring, and it will show you if there is damage to that ring. It's also another cool thing to know what's going on before you have to pull all those tires off from that drum, believe me.
All right, so here it is zoomed in, and if you you can see, there's all your teeth, and see how nice and fluid it is. I'm just scrolling through here, through the capture, through the highest point, but as you can see, it's nice and fluid. You're going to see some rises and, and uh, um, the pattern going up and the pattern going down a little bit, but that's because of the uh, the snap from the uh, set the sensor and everything and the clearance and everything. But that's normal. Um, this is a really good looking sensor. Now, say for example, if you were watching this capture and you like saw all of a sudden in between one of these teeth like a like a gap dropout then you would have a problem with your tone ring. Um, you could it could be like something damaged on the ring on like one of the one of the windows uh, for the seal. That's how it works on our bus. It's basically a tone ring that's part of a seal that uh, goes on the hub. Uh, so you can uh, that's what gives the uh, sensor its signal. So, uh, but anyway, you'd be able to. To see dropouts in this signal, you would see like a, a big gap. Or if, uh, say, if one side of the tone ring was bent, it would go really low, then high, really low, then high. Or you'd have like a higher amplitude uh, by chance. Okay. Um, and then another possibility, you know, say if this amplitude looks really, you know, uh, if it's also going low, then high, low, then high. To an extensive amount, you could have uh, wheel bearings that are loose. Okay, that's another advantage of this. By looking at this, it can tell you many, many things. Okay. So anyway, let me uh, go back out here. There we go. And uh, take a look here. There's another uh, cool feature you can do and. I use this quite a bit myself. There's a uh, a frequency channel you can use that can help you detect dropouts in signals by looking at the frequency. Just gotta wait for it to boot up here. It takes a little bit sometimes. There we go. Okay, the black trace here, that's the frequency channel. Notice how as the signal gets larger, the frequency starts going up, and then starts going down as the amplitude decreases, okay? This is another uh, quick way to see if you do have like an obvious dropout. So you could do this capture, do a frequency channel, and this is part of the picoscope. This is with the picoscope only. Um you'll be able to see a dropout. So say for example, um, you're in the middle of this capture at the very peak, okay? And like say right here at the peak, you had like a real sudden dip, okay? And then you zoomed in and then you would see it. You'd see something wrong with the teeth, something in the gap, something like that. So that's another feature of this scope that is very, uh, very helpful, helps speed things up for you, okay? So let me uh, get this off. And there we go. Um, so anyway, that's the, the new sensor. And uh, after I did that, I plugged the computer back in, drove it around the block too, just to make sure there weren't any other codes. And uh, there were no other codes, uh, the problem is fixed. Um, and uh, this bus also had uh, a code before that too that I already fixed. It had a speed sensor code for the right front uh, and open, but that one was pretty obvious. It just, it had a broken wire, so I had that one fixed. And the reason why I, knew, uh, I found out about this is one of the other uh, techs told me that they were having a problem with the left rear too 
and it wasn't documented on my work order, so I guess I was kind of lucky that he told me that, and now I will not have a comeback, so that's cool. So anyway, um, this is what you can do with this scope, and um, you think this is cool? That you're, this isn't even scratching the iceberg yet. This this thing is such a good scope. It, in my opinion, this is the best scope you can get your hands on, bar none. Okay, it has it can give you so much information uh, with really long screens, so you can do trends, so you can gra it's kind of like you're graphing things. So if something messes up, you're gonna see it. Okay, it uh, it's it's very helpful. Um, I've uh, scoped tons of different things and fixed a lot of buses with this scope. I have fixed uh, engine problems on our Cummins ISC engines where we'd have an ICV valve uh, that was intermittently acting up and then uh, on top of that found a bad transient suppressor because the transient suppressor wasn't given enough flyback voltage to close a valve. Okay, um, I've used it to find problems in alternators. Okay, excessive AC ripple, intermittent connections. Um, I've uh, used it for um, verifying powers and grounds to uh, Cummins ECUs where it had a code for uh, battery voltage. Okay, well, that code. It only it logs within a time frame of about six seconds. Okay, um, a lot of the time with a regular multimeter, you're not going to catch that. With this, you will. Um, I uh, I've scoped powers and grounds to verify if we have a problem on the powers and grounds to a uh, to the computer. Okay, so there's there's a lot of stuff you can do. Um, you can also look at uh, exhaust pressure waves, intake pressure waves on diesel engines. I've got a ton of those and I've used those to help me also verify problems uh, with valve adjustments. In fact, a while back I did a couple buses where I, I checked uh, the exhaust pressure and intake pressure uh, with uh, the scope and it gave me irregular patterns. Well, we got the bus in we checked the valves, and two of the valves were loose. They were like at its max limit, okay? Think about the savings, okay, that you're going to get by using this scope, okay? For an engine, for a reman, you're talking about 15 grand, okay? With this scope and uh, the problem that I found, I was able to save my company a lot of money, okay? What would you rather do? Would you rather pay fifteen grand for a remanufactured engine, or just pay the tech to adjust the valves, or at most maybe have to put in a cam and maybe some push rods, you know, and new lifters? Okay, it it's uh, it's pretty obvious what you want to do. I'd take a couple grand over fifteen grand any day. All right, so uh, the scope is extra money in the bank for you. If you, you know, if you take the time to learn how to use this thing and maximize its potential, uh, the things you can do with this thing are unlimited, okay? And it's going to save you lots of money uh, in the future. It's uh, on parts, you know, time, you know. Think about all the time you can save this thing. I've, I've started to save a lot of time by using this, okay? Now, I will admit... It takes a little extra time to hook stuff up and to see what you're looking at and everything, but think about it this way, okay? If it takes you a little bit extra time uh, to hook up, get your captures, figure out what's going wrong, think about all the other times you're not going to have to worry about this, the vehicle coming back, and then you end up actually spending more time than if you just would have done it right the first time, okay? So, this uh, this scope is unbelievable. I I can't stop talking about it. I I've learned quite a bit with it. Um, and uh, the people that I bought the scope from, um, AutoNerds.com, um, the guy in charge, Tom Roberts. Um, 
He's the guy I bought my scope from, and uh, I get a support package from him, okay? Um, the support package is lifetime uh, for the tool, because I bought from Auto Nerds, okay? So I get training on this tool, okay? They help me learn how to use it to the best of my ability, okay? And uh, they, they do that, and they also have forums where they... Um, you can get help from tons and tons of technicians all over the world. Um, there are quite a few diesel guys on there now, which is cool. Uh, but I'd really like to see more people be uh, buying uh, Pico scopes from Tom and Auto Nerds and getting on there, so I can have some more people, you know, to talk to. Uh, the people are starting to build up. We got quite a few diesel people on there now, but we sure could use more especially in the transit bus area, okay? Um, there's basically, I think, about maybe three or four transit guys on there now, including me. One guy is another guy from uh, Washington State, okay? And uh, he works on new flyers, uh, compressed natural gas engines. Um, and he uses his scope quite a bit, and he showed me quite a few things on, on how to uh, find problems on buses with the scope. So um, there's there's a wealth of information on there, and uh, um, I've been really working hard to build up uh, the Cummins Bus Forum. There's a forum on there for Cummins Bus. So any of you transit techs out there, you work on a lot of Cummins engines, you need to come uh, to Auto Nerds. You need to buy a scope from Tom. That way you can get into the Pico Group and be a Pico Group member like me. And then you can look at all the stuff that I have done over the past year and a half. I got a ton of stuff on there, and it's some good stuff, okay? Um, I can't tell you about it right now because it's Pico Group member only material, okay? So, and uh, it wouldn't be fair to the other members, okay? But if you get the scope from us, it's uh, you're going to get access to all that stuff. I'm telling you right now, it's worth the money, okay? Um, you might think it might be a little expensive uh, at first, but the investment is going to pay off, okay? Um, because when you get access to the Pico Group, you'll be able to look at all the stuff that I've done and all the other techs that have been on there. You get a lot of support, a lot of help. Um, there are forum moderators on there all the time helping okay if you have a problem they're there to help you um, the support is top-notch Tom and the guys are really good and all the forum moderators okay um, I have never seen uh, a group of people uh, so uh, dedicated before uh, in my life um, these people are really hard workers they want to help you they want you to be able to maximize the potential of your unit um, they're they're a good bunch of guys and um, another thing I might add the people that are helping you these people are all technicians okay these people are working technicians okay that have had a wrench in their hand and they've been doing this for years okay so they know what they're talking about and they know uh, how to steer you in the right direction okay so I, don't, I can't think of any other place to learn how to use a scope from than from actual people who have used one been trained and have worked in the field in my opinion that's the only way uh, to learn especially for stuff like this okay so um, anyway um, like I said you need to go to autonerds.com you need to ask for Tom Roberts, and you need to buy a scope from him, okay? It's the best uh, investment you can do. Um, and uh, when uh, when you do decide uh, to buy one, um, and if you want to get a hold of me and contact me, uh, got any questions about anything, I'd be more than happy to answer them. On the forums, my name is... Uh, uh, bus jockey, so I'm on there quite frequently. So if you have any uh, questions, you can sometimes get a hold of me on the general public area too. 
Um, I'd look on there also, so if you got a question there, you can get a hold of me. And then when you get on, if you decide to buy one and get on the Pika Group, like I said before, then it's pretty easy to find me. If you got any questions about anything, let me know. Uh, I'm more than happy to help. Um, I'm just trying to spread the word out to everybody and uh, get more people interested in, in doing this and showing you the benefits and what you can do with this thing, how it can save you time and money and frustration. Uh, so um, just uh, give us a shout and uh, we'll, uh, we'll help you out. So... Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I hope to uh, see some more transit techs on there soon. So, um, everyone have a good evening. Thank you. Bye.